Welcome to the New York Summer 2 Sports Show. The Yankees come out of the All-Star break and split a four-game set with the Tampa Bay Rays uh, wraparound series. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And this was actually the last series against the Rays this season. The uh, Yankees finished 7-6 and six versus Tampa. And, you know, seven of those, of those games were at Yankee Stadium. So not a whole lot to really make of that. Uh, Rays and – the Rays are a 500 team. Uh, the run differential is not very good, but we know, you know, the Rays are um, always able to probably um, – it's been a team that's overachieved in, in some ways, but this iteration of the Rays, uh, you know, isn't nearly as good as once from years past. And they might go into seller's mode with us being about a week away from the trade deadline. And they actually have some interesting pieces uh, that could be of interest to the Yankees. So it wouldn't be a total shock to see those two teams maybe make a deal. Some names that come to mind, Pete Fairbanks, Isak Paredes. Um, I don't know, Yandy Diaz, I'm not sure if he'll be on the block. Uh, Yankees caught a break with Yandy Diaz actually not playing in the series. Uh, was dealing with a, uh, a personal uh, matter, and so he missed all four games. Um, but a lot to discuss from the series. Again, first series out of the break. Yankees' record after the series is now 60-42, and 42, um, and they are a game and a half behind the Baltimore Orioles and three back on the loss side. So same amount of wins in 60. Orioles have 39 losses. Yankees have 42. So nothing's really changed a whole lot there. But it's been a while, you know, since we've spoke, obviously, uh, you know, with the All-Star break. And not really a whole lot to discuss as far as the All-Star game was concerned. Uh, Clay Holmes actually did not pitch in the All-Star game, and nor did he pitch in any of the four games in the series. I, I kind of thought that he might at some point. like, And so now what's going to happen is – because he is one of those pitchers that, like, if he hasn't pitched in a while, you don't know what you're getting. He is I, – I do, I'm do. i not sure if the stats back this up, but I think he's one of those pitchers, at least from a command standpoint, that is better when he's kind of been pitching a lot. And there's a very good chance he's going to be pitching at least one of these Mets games coming up. And um, we'll see where that goes. But, um, but yeah, Clay Holmes did not pitch in the All-Star game. And uh, Juan Soto, this was really a, a, a great week for Juan Soto where in, in the game he walks against Paul Skeens in the All-Star game. And uh, there was a two-run double. It's kind of a two-run single that was played into a two-run double. The All-Star game is not what it used to be. Um, but I figured I'd at least mention that, and that did kind of help the American League win because then Soto kind of carries that into this series. He was great. And I guess it probably does date back. I mean, he had some pretty good moments in the Orioles series. Like Soto is really starting to heat back up again. And as much as the Yankees need a lot more production beyond Judge and Soto, to be honest, both of them weren't really doing what we've seen them do. And now Soto is just taking it to another level. I mean, game one he, he of this series, he reaches base all five times. Um, he hit two homers, in, including three hits in the fourth game. I can't recall if he had homered in, in – see, the, the, the middle two games are going to blend together. I know when I go through this, games two and three, while they – while game three was closer for sure – Kind of had some similarities where, where a lot of Rays home runs, not a whole lot of Yankee offense to speak of, but Juan Soto's numbers in this series were off the charts. I think he was around like 11 for 18 or 11 for 19. He is definitely like the offensive story of this series, but still a lot to speak on. Um, and I guess let's keep it with the offense. Um, ben, let, let's go from top down, I guess. And it's interesting how the Yankees have been really facing a lot of right-handed starters. That's going to change with this two-game series against the Mets, where they'll be facing um, Jose Quintana and Sean Manaya. Now, if you go back to the, you know, and, and I'll maybe we'll save this for the preview of the two-game set against the Mets. But yeah, that will switch up. So it's been pretty consistent where they faced a lot of righties in a row. And Ben Rice was the leadoff hitter for each game of the series. Ben Rice has struggled. Um, and so the first thing that comes to mind is, at least against the Mets, at least one of the games, I would expect to see J.D. Davis in his in his place. And, and I would actually expect J.D. Davis to probably to start both of those games. Otherwise, what's the point of him being even being on the team? 
And in fact, when Giancarlo Stanton comes back, which could maybe be, this is more wishful thinking, but maybe as soon as the Red Sox series this coming weekend at Fenway, that'd be great if that were the case. Whenever that does come though, now obviously the trade deadline's not too far away. He probably does take the spot of J.D. Davis because he really has no role on this team when they're not facing right-handed hitters. And with Stan, Davis come, becomes a bit redundant. Anyway, though, Rice has struggled. I like Ben Rice. I, I, I think that they should be patient with him, and I, I think that there's a lot there. But there has been a lot of strikeouts to his game, which really was something he didn't do a whole lot in the minor leagues. So it seems like you know there's definitely an adjustment period. Where, you know, and really ever since that three home run game against the Red Sox, he obviously had a couple of moments, um, but that's about it. Where he had like a big hit off of Fairbanks, I think, in that fourth game against the Rays in the ninth inning. And then, of course, the home run off of Kimbrell in the ninth inning against the Orioles in game three before the break there. Also keep in mind, this is the first series since the debacle um, where Holmes comes in the ninth and the Volpe and Verdugo fuck-ups. We'll get to those players. One of them... Maybe not trending upward. The other one kind of continuing to trend downward. I already touched on Soto, who was great. Aaron Judge had a really good series. Um, just consistent. He had a pretty big three on homer in game three to kind of put the Yankees back in it, but they would still lose the game. A lot of missed opportunities in game three. But yeah, Judge was really good. Alex Verdugo did back cleanup in game one. However, starting, I believe, with game two, they dropped him down to six and they moved Austin Walls up. You had to do it. You had to do it. Alex Verdugo only had one hit this series. I know he hit one ball really hard in game three in a big spot. But, you know, for Verdugo, it's been a big disappointment. And I would think that he, with two – again, I'm curious about this. With two lefties pitching, I think there's a decent chance that possibly I, – I, I think – I guess I would say that there's a better chance that Rice sits, but I think Verdugo might sit one of the two games, and you might get a situation. Now, now of course, Trent Grisham is, is, is also, like, someone that might sit. So I guess what I'll say is this. I have really no clue what the lineup will look like versus lefties for many reasons. We haven't seen the base left in a while, and then things have kind of changed lineup-wise. But Verdugo, against a righty, has now moved down to six, which is where he deserves to be. And Austin Wells, he's done a pretty nice job. He really has. Wells had a really good game for – I uh, don't know if the number is really too great in the first three games necessarily, but, but just, yeah, bat quality has been pretty solid. Well, you know what? Game one, he actually had three walks uh, they, and uh, and a sacrifice. So, um, you know, he, he's been getting on base again. Like the OPS is not all that bad. So I'm not saying that you want Wells as your cleanup hitter, but, I you know, I do think that he's going to, you know, be, have a pretty big role in this team, especially with Jose Trevino out. Another thought that comes to my head, will Carlos Narvaez – Will he start one of these two games against the Mets? So another possibility to happen. But I kind of figured that Wells might start all four games, which you don't always see. And one of them was a day game after night game. But because of the fact that they were coming back from the break, he's fresh. It made sense that he played. Carlos Narvaez actually got into, I guess it would have been game two. First that major league at bat, he got a base hit. So that was good to see. Um, Glaber Torres, bad series. And he actually didn't start the fourth game. But Glaber, who had actually not been all that terrible at the end of the break, Glaber uh, not so good and, and made an error in game three that led to a run. So, yeah, not not great there. But, you know, we'll see. You know, we'll see what his future holds. Again, with about a week away, or a little more than a week away from the deadline, like, is Glaber traded? I think it's a possibility. But if I had to guess, I, I'd say that he'll still be here. But there's no way I'd be stunned. Absolutely stunned if he was a Yankee uh, come 2025. Um, where else do we go? I guess, I guess we talked about Verdugo and, and his struggles, and those have continued. Um, Anthony Volpe, good series for Anthony Volpe, uh, w- which is nice because he was one of those that was really having a tough time. But this was – he was definitely – honestly, you can make the argument after Soto um, that Volpe may have been the second-best offensive player. Um, I, I know, obviously, Judge did a lot of things. Um, but yeah, probably, probably Volpe really, really good series for him and a big three run double in game one, which was really, really big and, and a Homer. He, he got, he got off the schneid. He had not homered in over two months and he homered in game four. Trent Grisham, 
Uh, not a lot that comes to mind. He didn't really do a whole lot. Uh, and he had actually been coming in kind of hot out of the break, but didn't really do a whole lot in this series. And then DJ LeMahieu, uh, a really – it was it was truly a really bad series for DJ. But the ironic thing was he also gets off the stride with his first homer of the season. Uh, it was off Zach Patel in game four. So you hope that leads to something. I don't think that it will. And beyond that, a really brutal series for DJ who did not play game three. I actually thought they may, may not play him for game four. But I'm glad they played as Waldo. That was good at least where they sacked Labor. And as Waldo, I think – in, at least until the deadline, against righties, he should be getting almost exclusive run, whether it be a third base or second base. I think that's deserved. Um, as well, has done a nice little job, especially lately. He did hit a rut, and to be fair to him, he had been sitting. It's not easy to, you know, to gain traction and to get momentum. So, but yeah, LeMahieu, um, pretty bad, and he's really here in the booze. Uh, you know, I think once it reaches that point, it reaches that point. It took a while, and I think DJ, for myself included, LeMahieu was a fan favorite for everyone, um, you know, in 2019 and 2020. Um, and, and ever since he signed that contract, which all the fans wanted, right? So I'm not going to criticize it. It almost was as if the fans almost pressured the organization into doing it. Like, the, after, he, after the seasons he was coming off of, they could not let him walk. But unfortunately, it has been – and this is now year four of a six-year deal. It's been bad. And now this year, it's really, really bad. So, DJ, uh, not sure what the future holds there, but it'll be interesting to see. Um, and so, yeah, so, that's the offense. And let, let's quickly touch – just run through the starting pitching. Garrett Cole, good. And I'd say very good in game one. Nesta Cortez, really bad in game two. And so, those hold home road splits. Well, now we can kind of not throw it out the window – but he was amazing at home. He got really uh, shellacked in game two. Marcus Stroman, decent, I, I, I guess I'd call him game three. Not bad, not great. And then Carlos Rodon in game four, excellent. Like really, really good. Um, I would maybe say his best uh, without looking at the game logs, and it's been a while. There might have been a, a few good, really good ones thrown in there. Felt like it might have been his best start of the season. Like that's the Carlos Rodon you're looking for. Ten strikeouts, seven innings, only like two hits allowed. Those are the type of lines that he was putting up in 2021 and 2022. I'm not confident that we're going to see that on a consistent basis, but just to know that it's there is nice. And I know the Ray lineup, especially with that Yandy Diaz, is not all that imposing, but they are actually pretty good versus lefties, if there is one thing. And they showed that versus Nestor. But anyway, let's go into it. Uh, game one would be a pitching matchup between Zach Eflin and Garrett Cole. And... Cole definitely got the better of Eflin in that pitcher's matchup. Eflin goes five innings, seven hits, five runs. Four of them earned four walks and five strikeouts. Just a lot of traffic, and luckily the Yankees were able to break through. Really, Soto being the main catalyst and a big three-run double with two out in the third by Anthony Volpe. Again, this is a game where Alex Verdugo was still batting cleanup. Um, and uh, let's see, the Yankees. You know what's key for the Yankees it is them taking the lead. Yankees seem to press a bit when they're trailing. Um, it, it seems as if they're not able to get the big hit and break through. But when they do get a little bit of a, of a cushion, I don't know if they relax. I don't know what it is, but it really does seem to be a big thing for them. Where and we've seen in this bad stretch when they are losing, it, it kind of spirals. And on the flip side, when they're in that groove and they're going well, like you see these types of scores: six one in game one, nine one in game four, four where the pitching you know, is also really, um, you know, doing what they have to do and shutting the opposing offense down. So let's just jump to the bottom of the third, which is where the Yankees do most of their damage. Ben Rice leadoff walk, Juan Soto bunt single. It's part of his arsenal. Uh, it's what makes him impressive. It's almost disappointing because you know Soto's capable of so much more, but the fact that he can do that and isn't afraid to is great. Then Judge walks, and then Verdugo gets an RBI ground out. So it wasn't it hard, um, but it gets the run in. Then Glaber lines out to first. To be fair to him, like, well, eh, that wasn't really – yeah, it really wasn't hit that hard when I think about it. So Glaber doesn't come through there. Then Austin Wells works a walk. Um, and so that sets it up for bases loaded, two out for Anthony Vol Volpe, and he gets a three-run double down the left field line. Uh, so that was really big to see. Again, Volpe – uh, this was a very good series, and hopefully it's the start of something, you know, and it's a good response 
after what had happened in Baltimore, that's a good response for Volpe. So that makes it four nothing Yanks. Then at the bottom of the fourth, a little league home run for Juan Soto, where he doubles. Um, I, he was a lot of opposite field for Juan Soto. He was peppering left center field all series long. He doubles. Randy Rosarena bobbles it. Good hustle by Soto to go to third. Rosarena throws it in um, to Richie Palacios, the second baseman, who throws it to third, and it goes into the Ray dugout. And so Soto scores. So, yeah, again, a little league homer for Soto makes it 5 nothing Yanks. Um, then in the sixth, the Rays do get on the board. Brandon Lau homers off of Garrett Cole, his 10th homer of the year, but a great start for Cole as he goes six innings, six hits, one earned run, one walk, and eight strikeouts. So good stuff for him. And really hoping that he can bring this into the Mets game where that was his worst start. Like in, in this young season for Garrett Cole, that was for sure his worst outing by far. And hopefully he can, you know, bounce back from that and, and show where he's kind of um, gotten to. Where that was what that series must have been what about a month ago or so, something like that. Um, Sean Armstrong comes on in the sixth for Eflin, and a two out rally for the Yankees is Soto doubles and Judge singles. Why you would again, why these guys get pitched to as much as they do, um, is kind of boggles the mind considering what is around them in this Yankee lineup, but they continue to get pitched to. Uh, so anyway, 6 1 Yanks there. Tommy Canley comes on in the seventh. Does a nice job. One, two, three with a couple of strikeouts. Canely, uh, there's been some hiccups and some big homers allowed. I think about um, Rafael on the Red Sox, and then he allowed a big home run. Uh, what was it? Uh, to Santander against the Orioles. But, but around that, it's been pretty good for Canely. Eighth inning would be Jake Cousins coming on, and it was a good inning for Jake Cousins. He did actually pitch three of the four games this series, and um, – he did allow a home run in the second game that he had pitched in this series. So some mixed results for him, but he's certainly getting used a lot. And then uh, and then Caleb Ferguson actually pitches a, a scoreless ninth inning. So his role is definitely diminished, um, but he's still in there, uh, Ferguson, and it doesn't seem – and he hasn't really been bad. But, um, you know, when all said and done, I wouldn't be stunned to not see him on this Yankee roster post-trade deadline. But anyway, Yankees do uh, win at 6-1. So a nice, again, good pitching by Cole. Juan Soto goes crazy uh, without homering. Although, again, like I said, he did that, that, that Little League homer. And they win it. So it's a good way to come out of the break. Game two, not good. Game two, Nesta Cortez gets hit hard. Uh, and that's tough to see. Uh, and so for Nestor, uh, now where he, whereas he had kind of been on a nice run, now lately, not so much. And his record drops. And, and it is misleading to Four and nine, uh, but the ERA is three nine nine, which which is not great. It's not terrible, but it's not four and nine. He's not really getting the run support, but again, that's still not good. Four and a third innings for Nestor, eight hits, six earned runs, two walks, and only one strikeout, and left three homers. So an ugly, an ugly outing for Nestor. No way around it. And for the Rays, Taj Bradley was very good. Only let one hit, and that was a double to Ben Rice, to the first batter for the Yankees. That was it. Seven innings, one hit, no one runs, two walks, and five strikeouts for Taj Bradley. Was was giving the Yankees fits all game long. Uh, and three double plays for the Yanks as Waldo. Um, and, and that was as Waldo was later in the game. He came in, I guess, in the ninth inning, I think. But Verdugo and Wells with, with a couple of double plays. Some that were hit hard, actually. I think in, 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 in the case of Wells, I think it was hit pretty hard. But anyway, that's a part of the Yankees game, and they got to fix it up. Austin Wells moves up to clean up in this one. Uh, of no Juan Soto DHs and judges in right field. It's typically it's the other way around. Typically it's Soto and right, judge at the H. Um, and, yeah, so um, Rays take the lead in the third inning, and it would be a homer. Sorry, not a homer. This was a bad job by Nestor. Lito, Alex Jackson ended up, who's probably one of the worst hitters in baseball st statistically, and also Taylor Walls is more known as a defensive asset than an offensive player. Jackson walks in the third inning. Um, and then Ahmed Rosario singles to make it first and second. And Isak Paredes double play. So you're thinking, all right, you might get out of the jam, runner on third, two out, but Curtis Mead, who and I think he was the one that was called up in place of Yanni Diaz. He gets an RBI double, so that leadoff walk always comes back to bite, and it does in this case, and it gives the Rays a one nothing lead. Then in the fourth inning, 
it's more two out stuff. Um, and long story short, it ends up being a runner on second, two out, and you walk Taylor Walls, Nestor being you. Uh, and that's a recipe. It's not a great recipe, although, okay, Alex Jackson comes up, and what does he do? Yankee Stadium porch job, three run homer for Alex Jackson. Like, that just can't happen. Can't. Uh, and that makes it 4 nothing raise right there. We go to – and I'm, I'm, I'm skipping over some Yankees, you know, some opportunities, I guess, if you will. Um, first inning, Rice doubles, but then nothing comes of it after that. Um, second inning, Glaber walks, but then Verdugo hits a double play. Uh, third – what let's see, the fourth. Fourth inning, Judge walks, Wells double play. So there was chances to maybe get some things going that were quickly erased. And then the fifth inning – uh, Nestor Cortez is not able to get out of the inning. Isak Barady, 16th homer of the year to start the inning. And then with one out, Randy Rosarena hits his 13th homer of the year. And I guess that's where I'll bring up, but it's more related to Jose Siri. Just, but, but we know what Rosarena does, just very slow around the bases. And that kind of was a bit controversial, I guess, in terms of talking about it. It didn't lead to anything. Like it didn't lead to any. No, you know, no hit by pitch type stuff. I mean, Rose Randy got hit in the ninth inning of game four, but it was, I think that was just completely coincidental. But yeah, with the Rays, we know that's kind of part of their, like when I think of them, they, they do do that probably more than most. So that, that was a thing. Siri, I mean, Siri specifically, he, he is uh, definitely an annoying player to go against. There's no doubt about it. Uh, so that made it, made it say something and, and Nestor's day is up. So Michael Tonkin comes in. He does a decent job. Um, you know, as he's done for the Yankees, goes one and two thirds innings, allows one one earned run. It, it was Machieski who was actually sent down. So I should so Machieski ends up going three innings and throws fifty pitches. So for that, his uh, reward for doing that is he gets sent down, and Yoandres Gomez actually got called up. Um, but we did not see Gomez in the series. But yeah, so Tonkin gets a couple outs in the fifth, then in the sixth, uh, scoreless inning. Seventh inning, a leadoff walk to Paredes ends Tonkin's day. And then with one out, a Rosa Reina homers again. It's his 14th homer of the year, makes it 8 0. That's off of Machieski. Um, then, then in the ninth, they would add on an RBI ground up by Johnny DeLuca. And then the bottom of the ninth, the Yankees actually do score a run. Kevin Kelly comes on and Juan Soto triples. Although, to be fair, Jose Siri didn't really play this ball well. So, but then Jemai Jones, who had come in the game, gets an RBI grand out. So the Yankees don't get shut out, but they lose 9-1. And then that's where Carlos Narvaez gets his first at-bat in the majors and gets a single. So um, pretty impressive for your first major league at-bat to get a hit. Let's go to game three. Game three. Game three was a pitching matchup between Marcus Stroman and for the Rays, Shane Boz. And Boz really did not pitch well with the Yankees. This was, this was a frustrating game where game two, they just got absolutely their asses kicked. Game two, there was a lot of opportunity that the Yankees couldn't do anything about. Boz only goes three and a third innings, four hits, no runs, five walks, and one strikeout. Like when you see that type of ratio, but he didn't give up any runs. That's just where – and the Yankees did hit into some bad luck, but they also fucked up along the way. Marcus Stroman, the home run ball at Yankee Stadium is a problem. Um, he really wasn't really all that bad at all. Five, five and a third innings, five hits, three runs, only two of them earned, no walks, five strikeouts, and two solo shots. So he pitched well enough for them to win. And, and again, this is, you know, Stroman with the loss, you know, his record goes to seven and five, you know, three, five, one ERA. Again, like for what you got to take it for what it is. Like Stroman as a back of the rotation starter is decent. He's a fourth or fifth starter at this point of his career. Um, you know, but that said, would you feel great about him pit, you know, having a start in the playoffs? I don't know. I, I still need to kind of think about that. But what you know, he can't he, he typically can keep you in games. He he won't like it doesn't usually get totally out of hand, as we've seen, like where we're, we're Rodan sometimes, like the game just, just blows up on him. You know, Strowman. I don't know. This was an outing where it, it was a typical thing for him, where Yankee Stadium, uh, it's a problem where I almost feel like, in my opinion, I actually think that he pitched, he's pitched pretty well at home, but it's those home runs that absolutely, so that's why his ERA is a lot worse at home than on the road, but yet I think his whip is a lot better at home than on the road. So uh, in this game, LeMahieu out, Cabrera in, 
Um, and the Rays get on the board right away. Richie Palacios, first batter, homers, his fifth homer of the year, makes it one nothing. Um, first inning, he had a, he had a bases loaded one out situation, and Glaber Torres flies out to shallow left field. Just wish he maybe was a little more selective. Um, but yeah, it was too shallow, and then Verdugo lines out. So he hit the ball hard, couldn't really catch a break there. Then we go to um, the fourth, and Randy Arozarena homers. This was a bad pitch by Stroman. Just got way too much of the plate. 15th homer of the year. Gives the Rays a 2-0 lead. Um, and then, you know, and, and that's with two outs. But then it gets a little worse. And I'm sure Stroman wasn't happy about this because Glaber, uh, he makes an error where Josh Lowe reaches on an error by Glaber. Josh Lowe still second. And then Caballero gets an RBI single. So that's an honor and run, makes a 3-0 raise. Um, bottom of the fourth, you do get a situation where there's an opportunity. Volpe walk, Grisham walk. And then, and then even though Oswaldo had a decent day, he does strike out. Boz is one strikeout. He's done. They bring on the lefty Garrett Clevenger. Uh, the double steal by Volpe and Grisham. And then Ben Rice strikes out. So, again, Ben Rice, a lot of strikeouts. He's been struggling a bit lately. And then Soto flies out. Um so that was that. Did I skip? Did we get to the part yet? Of the Soto. Okay. I okay. want to talk about the second inning where Volpe single, then with one out Cabrera single, second and third and a double steal there as well. Volpe and Oswaldo. Rice walks. Soto has a 3-0 count and really scalds the ball. It's tough because – uh, Boz had thrown like seven straight balls. So it, it, it's an unfortunate outcome, but Soto really rips it for a double play, a 3-6-1 double play. So a little bit of bad luck, but the double play ball biting the Yankees again. Uh, and so let's go to the – let's go to the six. Tim Hill comes on, and Tim Hill's done a nice job for the Yankees. Like he hasn't really pitched in high leverage situations, but he's someone that I think is definitely earning some trust. And I think in terms of the lefty pecking order, probably – Finds himself ahead of Caleb Ferguson, although I can't, I, I still can't totally tell, but it, it kind of feels that way. Um, bottom of the six, Colin Poche comes on, who the Yankees normally do well against, and Alex Verdugo strikes out looking to start the inning. Really bad call that eventually led to Aaron Boone being ejected. It should have been ball four, um, absolutely, but it's called strike three, uh, and so Boone gets ejected to start the seventh. Uh, Jake Cousins replaces Tim Hill, and with two out, former Yankee Ben Rourke, Ben Walks, which you don't want to do, four pitch walk of Jose Siri homers. And that kind of took a little bit of the wins out of the Yankees' sales at that point to make it 5 nothing raise. But then they do make it interesting. Jason Adam comes on. You get a leadoff bunt single by, by Cabrera. Then after a right strikeout, Soto singles. Then Aaron Judge hits a mammoth three run homer. Adam hung it. Judge crushed it. And it's his 35th homer of the season. Uh, to cut it to 5-3. Then Austin Wells with a little excuse me opposite field single and then Glaber double play. And so that really killed the momentum. Glaber, again, a rough day for him with that double play with the error. And again, kind of deserving that he didn't play in game four. Luke Weaver comes on, a 1-2-3-8 thing for Luke. Uh, but then in the ninth, and then again, this is a two-out situation, and Weaver's been fantastic. Jose Caballero homers. Uh, his seventh homer of the year to make it 6-3. So, again, whenever the Yankees kind of made it a little interesting, the Rays were able to kind of push back. Um, and a lot of two-out damage. Caleb Ferguson would come on to replace Weaver to get the final out of the top of the ninth. Then Pete Fairbanks, the closer for the Rays, comes on. Gets into a little bit of trouble. A one-out Ben Rice walk. Then Soto doubles uh, to make it – and it's already a double to make it seven, to 6-4. And, again, this was another play where Siri – Kind of, you know what? This was actually the one. Maybe the, the triple actually was more clean. This was one where 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 Siri was just not near the ball, and he should have been. And then Judge flies out. Interestingly, interesting that I know he was a tying run, and you don't want to put like have the lead run come up, but they pitched to Judge, and it, and it works out for the Rays. Uh, it was risky, but he flies out, and then Austin Wells strikes out, looking to end the game. So this was probably the most frustrating game of the four, uh, and the Rays win at six four. But the Yankees. Uh, with, with a rare, you know, Monday afternoon game uh, to end the series. Well, not the fact that it was the afternoon, but just the fact that it was a Friday through Monday series. Um, they are able to at least, you know, split this series, which is which was exactly what they needed. Um, and so the pitching matchup was between Zach Littell and Carlos Rodon. Littell is very hittable. 
Uh, even though he, he looked good to start, first inning at least, but he goes five and two-thirds, nine hits, five and runs, two walks, six strikeouts, and three homers. Like, Littell is definitely a step down. Like, there's certain pitchers who the Rays have that you can tell have some nice upside, and Taj Bradley, uh, even Shane Boz, even though he struggled. Um, Zach Eflin isn't much of a strikeout pitcher, but he's a good pitcher. I don't know, Littell just seems like a step down, uh, for sure, compared to, you know, you got like Ryan Pepio is, is to me, a nice pitch that the Rays have at Littell. Uh, Yankees take advantage of it, which was good. Um, and he was actually with the Yankee organization very briefly. Uh, he was involved in a trade with the tw- Yankees traded him to the Twins when they got Jaime Garcia. And Mattel's kind of carved out a nice career for himself in the majors. But anyway, Glaber sits this one. LeMayu back in at third, as Waldo at second base. And I've said this before, but we can put to, we can put to rest. DJ LeMayu is basically done as a second baseman. Like, that's just never happening anymore, unless it was an absolute emergency situation. He is uh, purely a corners infielder at this point. But uh, Yankees do take the lead in the second. Back-to-back homers, Austin Wells hits a seventh homer, and then Anthony Volpe hits a seventh. So, again, Wells continues to to really do a a pretty nice job. Um, the, The offensive stats are steadily increasing. The OPS is up to 715, which on this team is one of the better OPSs, sadly. And then Volpe homers uh, right after that. And that's his first since like May 16th. So that makes it 2 nothing. Then let's go to the bottom of the fourth. Single judge, single wells. Then Volpe strike out, strikes out. Verdugo grounds out to move the runners over to second and third. And as Waldo Cabrera kind of just finds the hole. Brandon Lau at second base. It kind of deflects off his glove and into the outfield. But a big hit for his wall. That These were things that we were seeing earlier in the season where he would come up and kind of get that big runners in scoring position hit to give the Yankees a 4 nothing lead. That, that was big. I mean, that was kind of the equivalent of the Volpe hit in game one. And then in the top of the fifth, Jose Siri breaks up the no-hitter that Rodon had had at that point. Siri's 14th homer of the year. Again, you know, really slow around the bases. But, hey, look, if he's going to homer, then he's going to have the chance to do that. And so it makes it 4-1 at that point. And then DJ LeMahieu hits his first homer of the year, and it barely went over that left field wall, but it counts. And he got it. Uh, that was the only hit he had in the series. His batting average is 181. His OPS is now over 500. It's 504. But good for him. I hope it gets him going. I'm not confident that it will. But that makes it 5-1. And then um, bottom of the sixth. Let's see. No. No, let's go to the – I mean, Ben Rice got screwed over um, by a bases loaded situation where they called strike three. That was a ball. It should have been ball four. Um, so Rice ends the series – Adding 200 flat on the on the season and a lot of strikeouts lately, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do with that. Um, I think that they'll leave them at leadoff for a little bit here, just because you don't have other options really. But yeah, again, don't be surprised if he sits at least one of the games against the Mets. Um, yeah, and Rodon goes seven strong uh, again. A, a tremendous outing for Carlos Rodon. Uh, improves to ten and seven. He needed this seven innings, two hits, one run, two walks, ten strikeouts. So. Really, really big for him. I hope somehow this gets him going. And his next start will likely be Sunday Night Baseball at Fenway Park. So that, to me, is a pretty big test considering he struggled against them last um, last time at Fenway. So let's see what he does. Tommy Canely comes on. For, oh, no, I should mention Juan Soto with a mammoth down the right field line home run. His 24th homer of the year makes it 6-1. to one. Then in the eighth, Tommy Canely throws a scoreless eighth inning. Uh, bottom of the eighth, Soto's at it again, this time off of Kevin Kelly, a three-run homer. Uh, this was more of a line drive, um, a Yan- more of a Yankee Stadium-type home run, but his 25th homer of the year, a monster day in series for Juan Soto. And then Jay Cousins finishes it out in the ninth. And again, he ends up pitching three of the four games. Um, so, yeah, Soto just really good stuff. And, and so he ends the series with a 311 batting average um, and an OPS of 1029. So – yeah, pretty impressive stuff for him. And so now 71 ribbies, 71 ribbies and 25 homers, which, which it, it's crazy because Judge, like that, it just shows you how good Judge is where he's at, what, 35 and 89? <laughs> Insane. Um, so, yeah, so now we, we, we go to a two-game set against the Mets. And the Mets, they will be finishing out, as, you know, as I'm recording this, the Mets have not yet – finish out their four game set. So they also have a wraparound series uh, at the Miami Marlins where they have lost two of the first three. So they'll hope to do what the Yankees did and split 
and, and end off on, on, a, on a, uh, a four-game split. But now the Yankees will be looking to exact some level of revenge as, as those two games at City Field were heavily dominated by the Mets. I mean, the Mets really, besides Aaron Judge hitting a homer to, to kind of make that first game interesting, other than that, the Mets pitching really beat up on specifically – Cole and Heal, who will ironically be the, the same two pitchers in this series. But the good thing is both of them are in a lot of a better place than they were last time. So you hope that helps. Um, and again, so three of the four pit starting pitchers are the same. The only difference is that we'll see Quintana, whereas last time it was David Peterson. So Quintana versus Heal in game one. And then game two will be between Manaya and Cole. So a lot of the times in years past, it seems to be in these four-game situations, we've seen a lot of splits. In fact, we've seen, uh, not in the case of last year, but a lot of times two wins at City Field, two wins at Yankee Stadium, like two for the Mets at City, two for the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. Last year was a split in both spots. But, but my, my point is a lot of times it ends up being 2-2, and we'll see if the Yankees can do that again. So this will definitely be an interesting one. The Mets, they're right in the National League wild card race, so these are big games for them. And, of course, the Yankees are right in the thick of the playoff race, uh, you know, AL East and wild card as well in the American League. So looking forward to this one. Uh, for the Yankees, they, they, there is a lot to improve upon for sure, but you're hoping that, you know, with the way Soto is hitting right now, maybe Volpe gets going with what he did. Um, bullpen's been pretty good, honestly, other than Clay Holmes as far as the real big-time contributors to the pen. So they're playing better than they did, you know, the last time they played the Mets, and the Mets are probably not as hot as they were then, too. So we will see what happens. But, yeah, the Yankees uh, will continue. They'll stay at home, stay in the Bronx, and we'll see what happens in the Subway Series after the Yankees are coming off of a split in the four-game set, uh, coming out of the All-Star break versus the Tampa Bay Rays, and now the Mets will come to town. 